Would you rather have the love of your life or the career of your dreams? The career. The career, okay. Yeah. Of your dreams. Yeah. Why? Um, you don't want love? I mean, love is good. Like, love is great. But at the same time, I feel like a career makes me feel like I have more, like, fulfillment, like, in my life. Uh... Ladies, please attend school. Focus on your education. Get your degree. Work hard and become something in life. Relationships or marriage is not a career. A man is not a financial breakthrough. He is not your bank. Make your own money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to another episode of Masculinity Unlocked. I am your host, A.V., a.k.a. Alpha Villains. <laughs> guys, do me a favor. Make sure you guys like this video, share this video. Today, we're going to talk about a very sensitive topic, okay? How much your commitment is worth, okay? How much is your protection, your, provi- your provisioning, your last name worth to modern women? There's a new study out. Research says that women don't care about your last name. Women don't care about your commitment. And women are making more money. As a result, women would rather chase their careers than start a family. Let's go. And raised to be selfless, to nurture, to pour into other people even when her cup is empty. And men often are raised to prioritize themselves and their own happiness. So when opportunities come up, he's not thinking about the relationship. He's not thinking about, you know, what it means for her. He's going to take it. But I feel like women don't often do that. You're considered a bad girlfriend if you don't drop everything to be at this man's side. That's the operative word, young lady. Bad girlfriend. Okay, we're talking about women and their priorities. Okay, now let's be objective, shall we? Let's be mature adults. If you have a daughter, a sister, a baby mom, wouldn't you want her to provide for herself in the event the husband drops the ball, the man drops the ball? Now, I'm not simping for women, but at the end of the day, it takes a certain type of man that commands a woman to drop everything. That type of man is a man of value. That type of man is on his grind. That type of man has different things going on at the same time, different stakes in the fire. If the woman is smart, she knows that if she plays her cards right, she will be able to take advantage and come along for the ride. But you can't expect a woman to drop her career. You can't expect a woman to stay in the kitchen for you because you are able to repeat some shit that you heard on a podcast, bro. (laughs) How's that working out for you, bro? Sure, some of them took the bullets out, the, the gun out your mouth. Sure, some of them gave you some friends that you can meet and shit and meet up once a year. But at the end of the day, man, if you don't have your shit together, you're not on your way up. You're not doing anything to better yourself. A woman's not going to drop her priorities for you. How many times we have seen women sacrifice their dreams, their goals, all of this for the sake of a man, just for that same man to throw it back at her face years later and to mock her for not being accomplished. These are the same men that beg their wives to quit their job to be a full time mom. And then after a few years of that, they they mock her for not earning an income. That's a fact. That's a fact. Now, let's be objective and let's talk about it. Let's keep it real, okay? Now, if you are, you've decided to go down that route, you decided to have a kid with a woman, hopefully you're in a position where you can tell the lady to drop, you know, to quit her job for a year. Maybe stay home with the kids during those pivotal years while you're out there killing the dinner and grinding. What kind of man throws it back in her face that the woman is not making any money? Now, it's all about the vetting process. 
You knew she was lazy. Uh... You knew she was going to ride it all along. And we all know deep down that women are never satisfied. So if you decide to give your woman the luxury of staying home, raising your kids, make sure you set a hard deadline. As soon as the kids are able to go to preschool, she's got to get to work, whether she's working for you or for herself. She's going to have to contribute. And I don't want to hear no shit about homeschooling either because you're not that bright either. Because of all of her labor is unpaid. You shouldn't be the only one always expected to do the sacrificing. You shouldn't be the only one that has to drop out of school or quit your job or start or stop earning an income or leave your dream job or move away from everything. You shouldn't always have to be the one who is doing all the sacrificing. You have to do all the sacrificing to be with the right man. It is what it is. We all know who makes more sacrifices, men or women. Men do. Not because we want to, because we have to. Okay? The government, the system is against us. Society is against us if you're masculine. We have to take more risk. We have more responsibilities. You guys can take pictures on yachts. We have to rent and charter the yacht. Okay? You guys can be fat. You guys can have multiple kids. You can be driving a Honda Accord. And you can still get flown out. So at the end of the day, women, you have to sacrifice for the right man. And the right man is the man that's on his grind. Of course, more on that careers. See, as a man, nobody is coming to save you. Nobody is coming to save you. If you don't have your life intact, if you don't get your life together, if you don't get your ass together, nobody is coming to save you. Don't forget, a girl who is broke, a girl who is basically has nothing going on in her life, a man from nowhere can come up and marry her or date her and change her life. But you, before your fellow guys even help you, they, they will need to extract value from you. But all a girl needs to get someone that will help her is to look beautiful, is to look hot. And so you know it, she's made for life. But you as a guy, if you don't focus on your career and you focus more on chasing women, 10 years or 5 years down the line, you look back and you'll be like, Bro, I'm, I'm not achieved anything with my life. Men need to focus. He's spitting facts, guys. Okay? 50-year-old man. I ain't broke, but I had more money in the past for a number of reasons, economy, et cetera, investments, new responsibilities, et cetera. I made a lot of mistakes. Okay? Make sure. Pussy's great, man. Pussy's great. Wasted a lot of time on pussy. Wasted a lot of time doing the Bobby Brown and the Whitney Houston and the rock star shit. Where did it leave me? I'm back at square one. Now, it's never too late to rewrite your story. It's never too late to turn things around as long as you prioritize. So if you have a women out here with more options in terms of the way society views them, the way that things are set up, the way the game is rigged, they have more date options, etc., they don't have to sacrifice as much because everything is given to them on a motherfucking platter. You know they rather choose careers over commitment. What the hell are you doing? Instead of complaining, what are you doing? The more you complain, the more you stay the same. Conversation with this guy I was briefly talking to, and he asked me what I plan to do after I finished up my master's. And I was like, well, I'm highly considering going for my PhD. And, you know, down the line, maybe like a opening up a nonprofit. And he was like, you don't want to be married? And I'm like, yeah, I want to be married. I was like, what you mean by that? And he was like, how you going to do that if you're trying to pursue your PhD? I guarantee you, I guarantee you this nigga works at a call center. <laughs> nigga, what do you do to be able to provide for double incomes. Where do you live? What part of the United States do you live? You asking this broad. If she wants to want to be married. Nigga you know you need double income. Why don't we stop fronting. Like all of us make all this money. That we don't need a bitch's contribution. Even if it doesn't match. The bitch got to pay for something bro. Even if it's, if, Whether it's fries or coffee. She's going to have to contribute bro. And I was like well that's where balance come in. And he was like, well, most dudes, like, when they get married, you know, they expecting their wife to focus on their family and stuff like that, not still on your career. 
And I was like, damn, first off, is that how y'all feel for real? Second, why does a woman have to choose? Why can't I want the marriage, the family, and the career? Like, I don't have dreams of being the the homemaker all solely by myself or anything like that. Like, taking care of home, primarily doing the child rearing. But damn, like, if I choose to pursue my career, does that lessen my chances of getting married? Like, genuine question. Yes, it does. It does lessen your chances of getting married. Now, nobody wants to get fucking married, bro. It's not beneficial to get married, to involve the government and the state in your business. You already know that. If you're a man, you want to get married, cool, but just understand what you're walking into. At the end of the day, women don't want to get married. They don't need to. If they have the cow, why get why buy? If they have the milk, why buy the cow? You're the cow, my nigga. Okay? So women don't care about that. So this guy, a lot of you guys are repeating shit that top G's have said or niggas that are like part of the elite squad of the podcasters and content creators and shit. These are the guys can, that can actually demand a woman to stay at home and, and rear their children. You can, my nigga. You got a degree from an associate's uh, a community college or a trade. You got student loan up the wazoo. Your credit's not that great. And you want a woman to drop her career because you heard a nigga say it on a podcast. You sound crazy. Women focus more on their career and building a long-term relationship instead of just like sitting around hoping that a man pays all bills or also just having like different situationships. What do you think about that? I think that a woman should absolutely get her ish correct because at the end of the day, you know, you're going to be the one to take care of yourself. You know, if you don't get a relationship or something like that, you're going to have yourself straight. So, and if you do end up getting a relationship too, like that's just adding to the table already. Like if you have your stuff already together, you got your money right, you got um, your like emotions, a house, all of that, then house. it's just going to add, you know. But at the end of the day too, if you don't, then you know that you're doing well for yourself. And that's all that really Another matters. Another thing too. This is important. This is important, bro. Okay. It takes a certain type of man, and I'm not special. All of you can do this. You don't have to be muscular. You don't have to be relatively good looking. Your mindset has to be on point, bro. You're not supposed to allow anyone diminish how you view yourself. Okay. You have to be so passionately ignorant about how you view yourself behind work that you're actually putting in. That no one can tell you different. So if the woman took a cushy job, she's making more money than you. She's not supposed to be better than you. You have a watch. You have a car. You're breathing. You have opportunities. You're going to be taking risks that she's not willing to take. You're going to be doing the work that she can't do for a number of reasons. So if a woman has or makes more money than you or makes the equivalent amount of money than you, it's your money. It's what you're using to build. Now, if you're dead fast and you are steadfast on making more money than the woman then you shouldn't be dating you shouldn't be complaining get your weight up and then dictate the terms of your relationship but stop repeating what other people say on podcasts because you're never going to live that lifestyle bro do you think it's possible real quick do you think it's possible for a girl to focus on a career and have a long-term relationship yes okay i just prime example <laughs> okay now, a woman could be in college. She could be getting her degree. She can focus on the relationship. What did I always tell you guys? Focus on a woman who is busy, if not busier than you. Okay? It's all about quality of time, not quantity. Okay? Now, if you have all the time in the world to see your woman every single day, every minute, then you're not doing enough, my nigga. Okay? Are you insecure because you got to keep tabs on her? You got to get her location locked down. You got to make sure you know where the hell she is at all times. Listen, bro. At the end of the day, focus on yourself. Now, don't ignore shit. We already talked about that. Have discernment. You'll get discernment with age and experience, trial and error. But at the end of the day, you're not supposed to worry about every single thing that a woman can do. You control what you can. If your spidey senses are tingling and you don't have enough information or enough data to confront her with some solid proof, focus on your craft, man. I feel bad for men who are not chasing their dreams. I feel bad for men who have not developed any type of skill set, who have not uh, identified or discovered their gifts, bro. We all got gifts. We all got talents. What's yours? 
You can have your dream career. You can have the dream partner that you want, the family. But this really depends on your priorities and what you are looking for. Okay. Okay. Let's rewind it. Listen to what this lady's saying. She's talking to you. She's talking to you. You can have it all. You can have your dream career. You can have the dream partner that you want, the family. But this really depends on your priorities and what you are looking for. I'll give you a personal example. I knew that what would fill me and my life is to be a mom. I kid you not, I seriously think being a wife and being a homemaker was just my calling. I okay. What do we always talk about? Find a woman who's into you. If you have a problem with women on girls' nights, find a woman who doesn't like to go out as much. A bitch that reads books, plays puzzles and shit. Okay? Very important. If you're not that attractive, you're not that easy on the eyes. Most, based off of quote-unquote beauty standards, you're not, you're an ugly man. Focus on a woman who finds ugly men attractive. A woman who finds your big ass sexy. They're out there. Sure, it's slim pickings. But when you find that person and she's willing to conform, she's willing to do what she wants, for what you're looking for, that's a woman that you want to invest some time in, bro. That's a moldable woman. This woman is saying that she knew her calling was to be a husband, to be a wife and a mother. If that's your timetable and that's what you want, that's, what, that's the type of woman you got to find. I love it so much and I fit the role perfectly. Does that mean that I don't have any aspirations apart from that? Of course not. I have a lot of other things that I want to do with my career and with my life, but I can put that on hold because I'm planning to have children at a specific age. So when Very important. She can put that on hold. Okay. This goes for men and women. Okay. But this is a pro-truth channel. This is geared towards men. It's never too late to rewrite your story. Now, I don't recommend you guys putting shit on hold. OK, don't put your shit on hold. But if you are on your way and the woman is willing to put some stuff on hold, make sure she's not doing it in vain. If she's putting the time out to raise your kids, she's putting her career and aspirations on hold. Make sure you're grinding. This is not the time for you to do Netflix and chill and chill with her more. Have a plan. Stick to the plan, man. The more you stick to the plan, you're going to win either way. She's going to be more attracted to you. She's going to be feel safer with you. And if she plays herself, you're still going to be on your way. So it doesn't really matter. When they're grown, I'm still going to be young. I'm going to be in my 40s and 50s. And I'll be able to accomplish all the things that I want. This wouldn't have been possible if I didn't prioritize my relationship first. I'm not saying to avoid the studying, avoid the working. No, you all know that I stabilized myself before meeting my man. You all know I had life experience and work experience before meeting my husband, before I got married. And I did this intentionally because I wanted to know what type of adult I was. I wanted to know what my interests were. I needed to figure out who I was before I could get married. And I knew exactly who I was at a very young age. So if you are going to invest in a career first, I need you to think about it long and hard. Be realistic with yourself. What do you want? You can have it all. You can have your dream career. What do you want? Okay. Now, we all know that women don't know what they want. They change their minds like they change underwear. Fine. You have to know what you want. You cannot determine and allow your life to be dictated based on what you heard a woman say on a street interview. You cannot allow a woman to dictate about some data that you heard on another man's podcast, bro. What does what do you want? And once you make it clear what you want, if the woman is willing to play ball, that's the woman that's worth entertaining. That's the woman worth vetting now. That's when the real fun begins to see, okay, you want to be with me? Let's see what you got. Career before your family. It's not going to end well. I get it. I know. I, Coach, I got to go out here and make this bag. I got to make this money. Boop, 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 Whatever it is people be talking about. It's not going to end well. You know, when we think about, are we doing what God created us to do? Are we doing what we love to do? What are we doing because we think it's the best thing to do for our family? Yo, very important, man. Are you doing what you love to do? Or are you doing what you have to do? Now, it's a slippery slope. Some of you have to do the things that you have to do. Some of the, some of the, you, some of the, you guys have lost and missed your boat. 
in being able to do what you love to do because you made some mistakes, you were careless, you were in a different mindset, you were programmed, you were following the norms and the narratives of what a man should be doing at a certain age. I get it. It's a real thing. It's part of the reason why a lot of men can have some mental health issues because they're very unhappy. Most men don't know how to be happy or don't know what makes them happy. Some people say happiness is fleeting. Some people say happiness is not realistic. What makes you feel better in the moment? What do you like to do? If you don't know what you like to do and you continue to allow women to frustrate you and you continue to dive into work that doesn't mean anything to you, you're going to waste your life away, man. Your kids ain't going to remember you. All they're going to remember is that you were never around. Your wife is texting the, uh, the next nigga and shit. That nigga knows your schedule better than you do. <laughs> so if you're putting in all these hours because you're of your family, your family can be taken away from you at a drop of a heartbeat, bro. We know that. So if you got to work a nine to five, you're probably going to have to do some shit that most of us have to do. Work a nine to five and focus on your motherfucking dreams. Get rich or die trying, right? It is what it is. I love what I do. I know I'm a voice. I know I'm I'm very influential, and I'm going to make it, B. I've told you that, okay? I got one of the best shows on YouTube, man. We all know it. It is what it is. Fuck the numbers. It is what it is. Make sure you guys like this video and share this video, okay? If you're not focusing on what makes you happy or what fulfills you, you better start now. Have you ever considered talking to God about what it is he wants you to do? And I promise you, it's not spend time away from your family. I was that guy. I can remember years, years ago, coming home one day, my oldest daughter said, Daddy, I'm not even used to you being here. And I really had to look in the mirror and say, man, what am I doing here? I am missing out on precious time that I can never get back. And my job will be here long after I'm gone. But my time with my family is precious and is priceless. Yeah, that sounds hot, my nigga. But if you're broke, you can't take your kids on your summer trips and all the kids are going on summer trips out of the country. And your lady's looking at you crazy because these women live vicariously through other people. And comparatively, that spending time at home ain't going to work. Uh... Okay. Very important. You got to make choices. This is why I always encourage you guys to not waste time. Please don't waste no time, man. <laughs> okay? We in July right now. Okay? It just turned 2024. Where are you at? Seven months in. Seven months in. We got five months left. Where are you at, bro? Have you accomplished your goals? Are you doing your shit? Or are you just repeating what other people are saying? Where are you at? have been really really focused like on my career which sounds so freaking cliche and i've noticed that like because i've kind of put like love and dating on the back burners i mean don't get me wrong i feel like there's levels of dating like i will go out on a date and you know spend time with someone like try to get to know them or whatever but i'm not putting all of my energy into it anymore and i will say that ever since i've like pumped brakes on dating and like putting all of these dudes before myself like i feel like i've gotten so much better results and i've gotten so much of my goals accomplished and it's like the universe is just rewarding me with everything and i really feel like i'm gonna find my person i like what she said i like what she said man this ain't no silly MGTOW shit a lot of you guys can't chew and walk let's face it it's okay eventually you can you can't do two or three things at once so if you say you got to focus on your grind and not date some people will make fun of you about that i get it it is what it is but once you become stronger, you become better, you start to prioritize. Then you can do two or three things at once. Then you can have a rotation. Then you can juggle shit. It really depends on how it's in line with your focus. This young lady says she put dating on the back burner. She said that the universe has been rewarding her with some things, aligning her with certain things because she's been focused. She's clear now. She's eating properly. She's just she's taking all the distractions out of her life. She's not doing dumb shit, celebrating every Friday night. Maybe she did it, did a digital detox. Either way, now she feels like she's seeing things clearly. 
And she feels in her heart that somebody, the right person is going to come along with her. What do I always tell you guys? It's lonely at the top. It's lonelier on the way up. Eventually, you will start to meet some like-minded individuals that share your same war stories, share your same grind. And certain people, certain women will gravitate towards that. Because when you chase something, it runs from you. When you are something, it comes to you, bro. Remember that. On my path to my career. Like, if that makes sense, that's what it's been feeling. That's what God has been telling me. So I would recommend doing that. Like, just give dating a break. Just focus on your career and watch what happens. Watch what happens. Focus on yourself, bro. There's nothing wrong with that, man. Focus on yourself. Okay? Make sure you are subscribed to this channel. Make sure you like the video. Share this video, man. If you want to donate Cash App, Alpha Villains are sending a super chat. Love don't pay her bills, bro. This is why women want careers instead of your commitment. The question came up the other day. If you reach a crossroads, do you choose your career or do you choose your spouse? And that's a tough question. Because for many people, they'll get to a point in their career where they have to put the extra time in, they have to travel, they have to, you know, take extra hours, they have to take a different position, and their husband or wife will give them an ultimatum, and they say, it's your career or it's me. Which do you choose? But in the conversation that I had with this professional individual, they suggested they chose their career, and they chose their career because they said, people are so complex and they're constantly changing, and there's something you cannot count on for a lifetime. But if you build a career, it's the one thing you can always fall back on. Okay, if you build a career, it's something that you can always fall back on. You gotta make choices in life, man. That's part of life. That's, that's what we go do as men. You gotta make the tough choices. This is why if you have kids, you're usually the bad guy. You're the disciplinarian because you have to beat your child because they're not listening. They're doing goofy shit. They're disrespecting their moms. They're doing some shit. Your daughter's sending nudes, whatever the hell is going on with these kids. But you're doing it because you love them. They don't understand it, but eventually they will. Okay? So when we talk about careers, we're talking about women. Women don't need your money. They don't care about your commitment or your last name, B. They don't care. Maybe deep down they do, but society is programming them. Women have more career options. And right now, you ask any woman, more than likely she will choose her career over a relationship. Okay? Now, do you guys remember this couple right here? Hold on. This couple right here. Does anybody know who this is? Okay? This is Amy Robach and TJ Holmes. Does anybody remember who these people are? Okay, we're talking about career choices, right? Amy Robach and TJ Holmes caused a lot of drama when they went from co-anchors on GMA to a couple in November, November 2022. Robach and Holmes began their relationship in spring 2022 when she alleged when she was still legally married to Andrew Shu, and he was married to Mary Lee Feibig on June 4th. You guys remember this story? They were co-anchors, a lot of flirting. And ABC fired them because of the affair. Now they have a podcast. So we're talking about women making choices, right? What do you choose? Do you prefer love or your career? I've talked a lot about living my truth. And so this is part of it. So I am fine having these conversations because there isn't a couple out there who doesn't. And so, yes, I don't. And I know you don't want to put on some false narrative that somehow... We're the perfect couple and we found our true love. And that means we never fight and we always get along and things are rosy and great. No, they're not. And even as much as we know each other more than most people who have been in a relationship for over a year, we've known each other for a decade now pretty much and we know each other really, really well. It doesn't mean that we still don't, like I'm learning things about you every day as we're, we've always worked together, but working with this kind of pressure over our heads is a whole other thing where the, the, okay go ahead yeah go i'm just saying that pressure is a lot what are you talking about the work pressure or the pressure now publicly for us to succeed as a couple oh see i don't i don't feel the pressure from the public to stay with you i know that i know you well enough and i've spent enough time with you and i knew how i felt and love sometimes is a choice when it's hard it's not just a feeling 
lust is a feeling, but love is a choice, I believe. And I have chosen to love you. So I don't feel pressure from the public to be with you. I would be devastated just personally because I want to be with you and I chose you. But I feel the pressure of our careers that I (laughs) believe were unfairly taken from us. And I really... Um, want to be able to do what I love and I want to be able to do it with you so that's more the pressure I feel here we go <laughs> okay a lot of times women get caught they turn on the waterworks we all know that women could cry on the drop of a dime you're not crying because you're remorseful you're crying because you got caught out there so now Amy saying that her career was taken away from her. This was a journalist, man. She was doing her thing. She got caught out there. They were both legally married. They made a big scandal. ABC fired them. Okay? So now TJ doesn't know what the hell is going on now. TJ's like, well, what's the problem? You're talk- talking about the work pressure, the public pressure. Everything's been going on family-wise for a long time. That turned a corner, and everything has been great the past month. But to now, you and I, for the past several days, it feels like the end of the world. And so, I mean, I'm asking you, what are you willing or are you waiting to let this cycle through? Or was this just a weird stretch of time? Because I, we haven't been together the past several nights just because of schedules and things have happened. We haven't spent as much time together. And the time we spent together was spent working. So all of that feels different. This is real shit, right? You know, women are passive aggressive. I'm fine, AV. I'm fine. But they're doing that passive aggressive nonsense. Okay? Now, this guy's trying to keep it real. He's trying to be transparent on the microphone. This is a problem, B. This woman is crying on air, talking about that she was unfairly taking her job. You don't think this white lady is going to leave TJ's black ass when a network comes in? And decides that she they want a pretty blonde. She gonna leave his black ass, bro. It is what it is. So we talk about being the hopeless romantic, right? Who's more romantic, men or women? Men are. I don't know if it was because we were programmed or not. We're the ones who got to bring the chocolate. We're the ones who got to bring the goddamn roses and shit. Open the car doors and all that shit. They call that shit chivalry. At the end of the day, now TJ is scrambling. TJ sounds nervous because he's like, yo, we haven't spent a lot of time together. What's pressuring you? What's the problem? So is it that just going to go away once we get back in the regular routine or whatever it may be? No, I mean, I think we need to talk about our different approaches to our feelings. If I'm feeling mm, just you and I aren't on the same wavelength, it it's devastating to me. So... What are you on the same page about how we're feeling? What are you talking about? Um, oh, bec- I just think how we communicate with each other, like what I need versus what you need. What you might not realize hurts me. I might, I say things or do things that I don't realize hurt you. And I think we have to be more open about communicating what we need. Okay. These are, this is, these are two professionals. I sought after very good journalists that threw it all away, risked it all for love. How old are these individuals? These both people were both married. I believe Amy was married twice. Uh, So you know what this is. You know what love is. Do you you not understand women, TJ Holmes? (laughs) You a light-skinned nigga, probably privileged, good-looking dude. You probably had pussy thrown at you all along, but you don't understand female nature, my nigga. You don't understand what's going on. Now you're getting on a podcast airing your dirty laundry this is gonna bite you in the ass my nigga and now you look dumb to feel supported even when it's tough even when it's tense even when we're in our own zones basically but, but where is but where did that where did that happen today that you had you said communication with you 100 percent, but we lost communication when I knew something, and I'm speaking from my perspective here, and you have a different one on how I might have been behaving as well, but you were 
you were, I knew something was up and you wouldn't tell me what it was. When? On the phone today. That's that passive aggressive shit. <laughs> My man said he knew something was up. I'm fine, TJ. I'm fine. Over and over, I asked, what's up? You just don't want to tell me? So what's going on? So at that point, I stopped probing. I know you were completely silenced, not speaking, one word answers. There was nothing to it. And we are talking about it now. That was how many hours ago? I mean, we didn't get it out until we got microphones in front of us now. Well, I didn't even know that this was going to happen. Well, I know that, but I'm saying, but why did, why are we talking about it now and not talking about it when you said you knew you had a problem? You knew you had an issue and you didn't communicate it to me. Well, I, I, because I was in an emotional state about Ava and I just felt like there were so many things that I was feeling. I wanted to make sure that I had the space to recognize why I was feeling what I was feeling. Okay, so when we talk to you guys, okay, when I tell you guys, keep grinding, what does that mean, AEV? Yo, you better focus on yourself, B. It's going to sound selfish, I understand. This guy's trying to rationalize with this woman. He clearly cares about this woman. You care about her, my nigga, it's okay. You threw away your career to try to be a podcaster. You didn't want those, those stuffy executives on your neck. I get it, B. I get it. But you played yourself. Now this broad said that she didn't want to talk about it. Then she didn't know it was going to happen. We're recording, right, Amy? You didn't know it was going to happen. Now you want to air me out. So now I look like a sucker. It looks like the honeymoon is over, bro. <laughs> yeah. What's so funny? I want to laugh. Let's rewind this. Here's an example of how to know a sign. How many of you guys have ever been through this shit? The honeymoon's about to be over, bro. Let's go. <laughs> Yo. What's so funny? I want to laugh. It's this TikTok I just seen. I'm going to send it to you so you can see. It's very funny. <laughs> nah, I'm good. You know I don't even fuck with TikTok like that. Don't send me that. No, you just don't have a TikTok account. You don't need a TikTok account to see the video, though. So I'm going to send it so we can laugh together. <laughs> I know I don't need an account to see the video. I've seen videos before that people have sent me. I just don't want to see this one. And honestly, you need to stay off of there, too. I need to stay off of TikTok since when you have a problem with me on TikTok. I'm a whole influencer. Word, you need to go on there and get your bag and get off. You get into addicted. I hate to see it. Okay, well, I don't say nothing when you be sitting in front of your computer on Call of Duty for seven hours straight, making no bread, just on there for vibes and to talk shit. So, leave me and TikTok alone. The honeymoon might be over, bro. Okay? <laughs> you got to know the signs. You got to know when there's trouble in paradise, man. Let's talk about 10 signs that the honeymoon is over, bro. Number one. You don't find their imperfections attractive anymore, okay? That mole she has on her ass, her teeth being crooked on the bottom, one of her areolas is bigger. Her, her imperfections that used to be attractive is no longer attractive. So you're starting to see the gray hairs coming out. She walks funny. When you start to look at those things and you start nitpicking shit that you already knew was there, you might be... This might be the beginning of the end, bro. And the honeymoon might be over. Number two, everything they do annoys you now, bro. Their laugh, if they snore, the way that they drink, the way that they fucking eat, the way that they kiss you, everything that this person does now is starting to annoy you. Now, if you care about this, bro, and you're like, damn, you know what I mean? She's starting to annoy me. You're going to have to insert and do different things, bro. Not spice shit up. Do things that's going to kind of make you a better a better man, better partner. You might need some time. Maybe go fishing. Go out with the fellas. Go to the gun range. Try something new at the gym. Do something to kind of reinvigorate yourself, bro, so that way you can be a little bit more tolerant if the bitch is annoying you. Number three, you scarcely give or receive compliments. Oh, that's the color you're wearing right now? 
Why are you wearing that? She's not complimenting you anymore. She's not telling you how you look good, you smell good. You're wearing that shit that you know that she likes. She's not even complimenting. She's acting like she don't care about it anymore. Once you start, stop getting compliments, you start, the woman starts indicating or stop noticing the little things that you're doing and she's nitpicking shit, the honeymoon might be over, bro. You don't daydream about your future together anymore. Okay? She's not planning future trips with you. Okay? She's not, she's not showing you new restaurants to go to. New things. She's not telling you or sharing some things that her friends did that she thinks that might be cool that you guys can do together. She might be on her way out, B. Pay attention. Number five, you stop saying I love you. Okay, how often do you tell your girl you love her? You love you tell her you love her every single time you guys talk on the phone, every time you see each other. When you tell somebody you love them so much, it starts to diminish and water down the word, the actual word. It's more about showing, not telling, right? Trust your eyes, not your ears. But if your woman was telling you I love you all the goddamn time and she starts to diminishing it, and now you're starting to notice it, there might be some trouble in paradise, bro. Pay attention. You don't miss them in their absence. You actually, now you encouraging her to go out. That's okay, babe. Go ahead. Just go out. Just bring me some Taco Bell on the way back. Okay? You don't miss them. You want them out. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Maybe she's getting on your goddamn nerves. Honeymoon might be over, bro. Or you might need some space a little bit. Pay attention to the signs. Number seven, you stop trying to impress each other's family. I'm not going, babe. You go. Just bring me back some food. Okay? You're not going with her to the parties and shit. Uh, your mother-in-law's birthday. She don't want to go to your mama's house. She don't want to go to your family's house. The cookout. None of that shit. She's good. That ain't nothing wrong with her. She just don't want to be around your people, man. Everybody's starting to annoy her. The honeymoon might be over. Number eight, you argue regularly about everything. Everything you say is no longer funny. She doesn't find you cute. She doesn't like your sarcasm anymore. It's starting to annoy her. Might be some trouble, B. What you going to do about it? Are you going to panic? Are you going to start to simp? Are you going to try to pick up the pieces? Or are you just going to focus on whatever you have to build for yourself? You won't be happy. You're supposed to be happy with or without her goofy ass. Remember that. Remember that. Number nine. You don't even recognize her anymore. Maybe she has some new slang. Maybe she's do- behaving differently. Who's teaching her those new things? You ain't teaching her that. You guys are getting on each other's nerves. You don't see each other anymore. She's learning different ways how to move. Somebody might be teaching her some shit. Maybe it's your replacement. And number 10, you fantasize more about your past relationship than your future one. Listen, man. Love don't pay her bills, bro, okay? I need you guys to understand that. But love ain't paying her bills. She don't care about your commitment. She don't care about your last name. She can protect herself or find a simp to do it for you. At the end of the day, man, who gives a shit? Don't let anybody diminish your value that you set forth on yourself. Only you can appraise you. As long as you continue to grind, as long as you continue to focus on the prize. Who's the prize? The man in the mirror. It don't matter. Women's going to come and go. But whatever you build is yours. And if it crashes and burns, it's going to be by your hand, not by anybody else's. Do me a favor. Make sure you guys like this video. Share this video. I'll see y'all next time. Okay?